I'd like to ask the Prime Minister about the illegal border crossings in the country. As many already know, Mr. Speaker, this is a serious issue we have in the country. Over 25,000 people have crossed over since it's begun, and indeed 600 over this past weekend alone. There are strains within our own federal system, and now we're seeing strains on housing in local municipalities. Mr. Speaker, what I'd like to know from the Prime Minister is what is his plan to deal with the situation? Good day. Good day. Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we are committed to a compassionate asylum system, all the while ensuring that only those who deserve to, who should be in Canada, are allowed to stay. In contrast, the Harper Conservatives cut $390 million from the CBSA and cut refugee health care. They created massive backlogs and processing delays, which we are still working to fix. We have invested $173 million, which include $74 million to ensure faster processing of claims. And while Conservatives continue to vote against funding for our security agencies, we will make sure they have the resources they need. Yeah. Honourable Member for Milton. The problem, Mr. Speaker, is this, that the Liberal government has three different stories spinning at this right. point yeah. in time. Yeah. The first one is the one that was unleashed on Twitter, and it did not say that only those eligible to stay would stay. In fact, it was quite an open invitation. Yes, the second is. is the Minister of Immigration, who will not even say the word illegal border crossing, and instead is traveling around trying to convince other people not to come to this country. And the third, Mr. Speaker, is something that the Minister for International Development said, wherein she posted, she posed the possibility that it's a good thing this is happening because it's helping a job shortage in her area. Can the Prime Minister tell me which story is the story they're going to go with? The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, once again, the Conservatives' approach is to muddy the waters and play up divisions and fear. Uh, we've made very clear that we are an opening, welcoming country, but we are also a country of rules and laws. And anyone who arrives in this country, whether it be regular or irregular migration, gets the full process of our Canada's immigration system applied to them from security checks to analysis of their files. We are signatories to international conventions that makes us uh, welcome refugees, but we do need to ensure that they are actual refugees or they get sent home. The Honourable Member for Milton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The apparent in our in in inability of the Prime Minister to actually understand the topic in front of us is gravely concerning. Yep. He opened up the floodgates when he tweeted out. He has done nothing to stop the floodgates since it's happened, and now he wants to rely upon playing some kind of blame game for things that he brought on this country yep. to himself. Concrete to stop this flow of illegal migrants across the border this summer. Mr. Speaker, despite all the fear mongering of Conservatives, I can reassure Canadians categorically that our immigration system continues to be applied rigorously and to the full extent of all the rules and principles that Canadians expect and indeed are reassured by. Yes, there is an increased flow of irregular migrants, but we are capable of dealing with them. We are capable of processing their files, and that, Mr. Speaker, is despite the backlogs left to us by 10 years of mismanagement of our system by the Conservatives. The Honourable Louis Member for Louis Saint-Laurent. Mr. Speaker, last Sunday on uh, Global, the Minister of Immigration said, we do not appreciate and we will not welcome irregular immigrants. Well, that was the beginning of something that might resemble the truth. However, a few days earlier, the Minister of Francophonie said that illegal immigration on Roxham Street was preferable to the alternative, the alternative being following the laws. Can the Prime Minister tell us who's right, the Minister of the Francophonie or the Minister of Immigration? The Right Honourable the Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, once again, we see the Conservatives trying to fearmonger and sow division. Yes, we need immigrants into our country. There are labor shortages. We welcome people from throughout the world because we know that this leads to economic growth. It leads to better quality of life for all Canadians. But at the same time, we have an immigration system that has to be applied 
rigorously, and we do that with integrity. We have a process that that applies to everyone, whether they be regular or irregular, and we can assure Canadians that our system will continue to be assured. The Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent. Mr. Speaker, all Canadians know that under the Conservatives, immigrants followed the, the rules and they followed the laws. It's not the Conservatives who let people cross Roxham. It's not the Conservatives who let irregular immigrants in. And it's not the Conservatives that allow 7,200 illegal immigrants in. My question is simple. Does he regret his famous tweet, the Right Honourable the Prime Minister? Mr. Speaker, just to be clear for the member opposite, for a long time there have been irregular arrivals in our country, yes, even under the Conservative government, which makes it even more difficult to understand why they cut almost $400 million to our border services. Why did they cut in health care for refugees, for vulnerable people? Mr. Speaker, they they created slowdowns in the immigration system that we are repairing, and we are applying our legislation. The Honourable Minister for Rimouska, Nijet Timiskwatali Basque. Mr. Speaker, in 2017, Kinder Morgan Canada declared $64.2 million in net revenue, and so they should have paid $64 million in taxes, but that's not what happened. What happened is that that company, using all possible tax loopholes, didn't pay a single cent, zero. They paid nothing. Knowing that, can the Prime Minister explain why it would be in the in national interest to give a blank check to, for how much, $5 billion, $1 billion, to a company like Kinder Morgan? that finds a way and has an interest in not paying its fair share of taxes. The Right Honourable the Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, what the NDP does not understand is that it's not a question of choosing between the environment and the economy. We have to create jobs while we protect the environment. Every year, we lose $15 billion because we don't have another market for our oil resources, and that costs money for everyone. We have researched and approved this Trans Mountain project under an improved and strengthened process, and it is in the national interest to go ahead with it, and that's why the pipeline will be built. The Honourable Minister, for, uh, rather, Member for Rimouski, Temiskotale, Basque. Mr. Speaker, does it make sense that a company that makes so much profit pays no taxes? It goes even further than that. For three years now, that company has earned more than $340 million. Do you know how many taxes were paid? 1.1 million in three years. So I'll repeat my question. Why would it be in the national interest to give a blank check of how much? $500 million, a billion, $5 billion to a company like Kinder Morgan that finds a way and has an interest in not paying its taxes? The Right Honourable the Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we can see that the NDP is doing whatever it can to block this pipeline that will create jobs in Canada and that will allow us to export our resources to new markets to improve the price that we are currently getting and to show leadership on climate change by bringing about carbon pricing and pollution pricing throughout the country, as well as defending our coastlines with an internationally known Oceans Protection Plan. We have proven that the economy and the environment go together. The Honourable Member for Masquinolgi. Paying its fair share of taxes. The result? Kinder Morgan Canada has only paid 0.004% of what they should have paid over the last three years. Wow. Mr. Speaker, that's over $180 million of tax avoidance. And now the Liberal government wants to use Canadians' money to subsidize Kinder Morgan Canada against any future losses. Wow. Mr. Speaker, why is the Prime Minister willing to use taxpayer funds to help an oil company that refuses to pay its taxes here in Canada? Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, every year, uh, Canadians lose about $15 billion because we don't have access to a new market for our oil resources. Getting this pipeline built will fix that. 
uh, and will lead to better jobs and will also allow us to continue to achieve our carbon reduction targets by bringing in a national price on pollution. These are things that Canadians understand go together. We grow the economy, we protect the environment, we do them both together, and that's what makes a difference for Canadians. Deputy de Bertrand, Bertrand Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister, Minister wants all Canadians Mastrange. to take all these risks on and then give this company all the profit. That's not fair and that's not balanced, Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister promised to eliminate fossil fuel subsidies. Uh -huh. What has he done? Nothing. Nothing. Instead of offering a big fat blank check to a company that refuses to pay taxes here in Canada. If you're a regular Canadian, Mr. Speaker, and you don't pay your taxes, you don't get a bailout from the federal government. <laughs> so why are they giving one to Kinder Morgan Canada? Here, here. Mr. Speaker, just to correct the record, we have committed and are on track to phase out inefficient fossil, fuel inefficient fossil fuel subsidies by the year 2025. To do this, we announced in our first budget the expiration of the tax write-offs on capital investments in LNG facilities. In Budget 2017, we announced the elimination of certain tax credits for exploration expenses in the oil and gas sector. We're developing our resources while protecting our environment, including safeguarding our oceans and combating climate change, our government understands that a clean environment and a strong economy must go hand in hand. Honourable Member for Banff Airdrie. Mr. Speaker, the Liberals continue to try to rig our democracy. They've tried to silence the opposition by changing the standing orders. They've tried to change the electoral system to one that would only favour them. And they've used Canadians' hard-earned tax dollars to campaign during by-elections, including over $60,000 in Lac saint jean and almost $70,000 in Markham Thornhill. And that's just the beginning of the shady spending, Mr. Speaker. It's clear the Liberals want to use tax dollars to campaign. So will they commit today to banning taxpayer-funded ministerial announcements and travel in the entire pre-election period? Minister of Institution. I wonder if the member opposite is referring to a former minister who wore a partisan shirt while announcing the universal child care benefit. But, Mr. Speaker, we have committed to ensuring that we have a pre-electoral period where we do have regulated spending. So, Mr. Speaker, I hope that my, the, op the member opposite, along with all members in this House, can get behind ensuring that we have a fair and level playing field when it comes to our democracy. Thank you very much.